Welcome back, folks. We've got a special Starbase summary for you today, kicking it off with some drone footage of the carrier John F. Kennedy, USS John F. Kennedy, actually arriving at the port of Brownsville. 40 years of service, the last of the conventionally powered aircraft carriers in the United States Navy. When I say conventionally powered, I'm talking about uh, the power generation for propulsion. All our new carriers are nuclear carriers, and this one is the old... Diesel? Fuel oil? I think it's like a special naval jet fuel or something. A little bit of a sad thing here, because after 40 years of service, it was actually placed on hold back in 2007 and was available for a museum to pick up. You've seen museums made out of battleships, aircraft carriers, whatever, right? It was waiting for almost 20 years for a, an organization, foundation, facility, museum, someplace to take it and turn it into a historical monument, museum, facility, whatever you want to call it, but unfortunately that never happened. So in 2017, they actually took it off that list, and here today in 2025, taking her into the ship-breaking yard in the port of Brownsville. Going to cut it up, cut her up, I don't know, wow, I actually don't want to say it that way, but you know how it is. Um, they're going to disassemble it and uh, scrap out all of the massive amounts of steel that it takes to build a floating city. You know, what I'd really like to see is uh, Super Heavy's pretty big, right? Starship stack's pretty big. I wonder what it would look like if you laid the entire Starship stack on the deck of the aircraft carrier there. Maybe somebody could come up with a graphic like that. That'd be really interesting. We could maybe look up the statistics on that or something. But anyways, we had quite a few folks out. Jack and Mary both capturing it. Jack took the drone out there to the jetty. On the right-hand side, that's going to be South Padre. On the left-hand side, off-camera, is the Starbase side. But Jack over there got some fantastic drone shots, sending the uh, USS John F. Kennedy on its way to end its career. I guess it ended its career back in 2007, but unfortunately it is not going to be in the shape of an aircraft carrier anymore. Mary was out there as well. This is over on the jetty side. You can see the rocks of the jetty there. Huge tug towing the carrier in. Now this is, you know, oh geez, this isn't star-based stuff. I want to see rockets and stuff like that. Hey, it's super interesting stuff that happens out here at the Port of Brownsville. Every now and then we get really interesting ships coming and going. Uh, you may have seen a couple of those ships carrying the massive wind turbine blades in and out. But, God, look at that. That's really too bad that that's the state that she ends her life in. All the rust and corrosion of so many years of faithful service. God, look at that. That's just a big ship, y'all. There in the background, you can see the uh, production site off that way. That dirigible, sometimes you see floating in the background of our shots from the Starbase side. A little white blimp sort of thing. Appreciate that they still have the American flag flying there as she makes her last call here at the Port of Brownsville. Maybe that's drama dramatiz dramatizing it? Dramatizing it? I don't know which word it is, just a little bit being towed into the port. But in any event, it's such a same shame to see things like that that uh, have so much history and so much service just be towed in for scrap. I like the, the escort. There's like the escort of uh, boats sort of floating around, especially in time lapse there. Sort of look like ants scurrying around the absolutely massive carrier. But let's hop back over to Starbase. Thanks again for riding along with us for the carrier send-off there. That's a flap being pushed in. Has some straps on it. Has a little dolly underneath it just being manually moved around. Hey, here's another special thing. So Jack uh, strapped a GoPro to the inside of the truck. I can tell because of the white hood of the truck there as opposed to the rust-colored hood of the Land Rover. <laughs> and this is what it's like driving all the way in from that uh, Brownsville Road. There's the Border Patrol checkpoint. You just drive in, but on the way out, they'll ask for your ID. You usually ask if you're a U.S. citizen. Sometimes you have a German guy in the car, and he hesitates, and he's like, uh, 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 and I'm like, come on, dude. 
Oh, we're going to turn. Look at this. We're going to turn over to the left. A little bit of a wide turn there to miss the truck, but this is actually the port connector road. The intention of this road is to allow heavy truck traffic to bypass the city streets. It actually ends in the port gate. Jack's not going to drive uh, all the way up there. But this gate is the inside of the port, and that looks like some more SpaceX tanks hanging out for transport over, let's say, either to Massey's or the production site. But that's what that connector is. So those wide loads and that heavy tr tr truck traffic can bypass the residential streets on Brownsville proper. Looks like we also got some shots of the John F. Kennedy back there as well. Are those cranes already in action? I love how there's just a semi-trailer parked on the front of it. You see that white box? That's an entire semi-truck trailer just, you know, parked there on the front of the aircraft carrier. So we're going to go back up the port connector road, take a left onto Highway 4 here. Avoiding the potholes and damaged parts in the middle of the road. Sometimes we drive a little bit over on the right-hand side. Oh, wow. We just fast-forwarded way ahead. We skipped Massey's there. It is a long drive. But we've light-speeded ahead over to the production site. All the parking on your left there. There's that mural on the left. There's the mega factory. Star factory. Sorry. Giga factory. We're just going to keep calling things things. Drive all the way past that. We have the village on the left now, some of the residential areas that, that manufactured housing and the original houses in the village. There's the Flaps restaurant really quickly. We're going to pass the NSF highway site. There it went. <laughs> if you blink, you'll miss it. We're going all the way out to the launch pad. We're going to come up on what we call the reflecting pool on the right-hand side. That water there is generally there year-round, and you can get some cool reflecting shots. There was the first gate. Hopper was over on the left. Whoops, got to slow down. Good idea. There's the second gate. Next thing we're going to come up to is the cryo-filling station. Here's the trucks parked on, or I guess one truck parked on your right-hand side. That last gate, a cyber truck. We're going to go all the way down to the beach. Oh, we're turning. Well, shucks, we turned onto the beach. I was going to keep talking, but uh, if anybody's hungry, we're back over to the assembly area, the stack of brontosaurus ribs. It is also going to function as the flame deflector. Getting it from a couple different angles here. And if you watched Starbase update that came out yesterday, you saw all of this stuff from the sky as well. What a fantastic update of uh, going over all of the detailed things that they saw there in the background. Cryo pipes, new stands, the flame deflectors, the work on the new launch mount there. You can see the launch mount in the background. Some mis miscellaneous deliveries on the truck here in the foreground. But just across the board, so much to see from the sky, and Jack and the team did a fantastic job going over it. We'll make sure there's a link down there for the previous Starbase update. Just came out yesterday, so the information is still super fresh. Still have a lot of scaffolding around the launch mount there. Remember, we're watching for that scaffolding to start coming down, but they're still working on the layer cake of rocket launching structure here talk a little bit about that layer cake setup in the Starbase update as well. Still working on some finishing moves. Let's see if I can see what... Oh, this worker's just moving along. We're clipping in and out. We're walking along. Maybe inspecting something. Hey, here's an oversized load on a hot shot. That gooseneck has an aft flap on it. They always wrap them. A little bit tough to see, but here you go. Mary can get right up next to it. If you'd like to see the plastic wrap around the general shape of the aft flap here sitting on the side of the road. Looks like that mural is not doing well at all. The left-hand side has sort of completely come off. That looks like it's intentionally removed because it's a nice straight line. Some of those panels blowing out. We've talked about that before. You can see the flame reflector on the right-hand side of this shot, right? But I really wonder if the wind, the high winds, the pressure differentials haven't been popping those panels off and ripping the mural with them. I'm sure they'll figure it out. Side of the rocket garden here with the sun setting behind you, so you had some fantastic lighting. Here's the Pez loader. So we saw this from the flyover as well, sort of looking in to, I'm pretty sure it was in the high bay. But uh, here we have it sort of poking out. And Mary got some fantastic shots of the... It's an automated system for carrying a stack of Starlings and loading them into a ship, the payload slot of the ship, instead of that one at a time thing that we saw him doing before. It'll be interesting to see that thing in work. Hopefully we do see it in work. 
Here we're over at Pad B again. A lot of dirt work happening. Constant dirt work has been going on. Putting the shielding. It's, look, is anybody going to argue with me if we call that shielding? Like, it's thick metal plates to protect the pulleys and motors and stuff like that inside. I, I think that it's fair to call it shielding. I don't think it's like, oh, well, it has to be at least a half-inch thick steel to be called shielding. I, I don't think... I don't know. Look, it's not a tank, all right? It's got a nice slope to the armor, though. What is that, like a 45-degree slope? So you'd have a high chance of getting ricochets or deflections if you hit it with the wrong angle with the wrong type of shell. Anyways... Up at the top of the tower, some workers enjoying the view, it looks like. Leaning on the railing. Maybe on the phone, are we? I'm not sure. Wide shot of the tank farm there. And pad A. Always lots of cranes. You can see a concrete pumper working in the lower right-hand corner there. Here's the rear pumping. <laughs> the German pumps that came through. I think... Uh, Adrian was helping us pronounce that correctly. I don't even know if I pronounced it correctly. I think those are center of gravity markers on that box as well. You see those uh, bullseyes that they've put on. A little bit of moderate time lapse. Concrete pumper wasn't moving around too much. Getting another shot from the distance here as the two towers rise up. There's the whole shebang, the two towers and the production site. And some yuccas. Ah, okay. This was in the flyover as well. See, I watched the I watched the Starbase update flyover version before I came here. They've been modifying this the stand. It looks like, and they're thinking they've installed a bunch of hold downs on the middle of that stand, and they're thinking that uh, they can test new booster test tanks in that test cell load cell. It's not really a load cell, I guess, but you know what I mean. Anyways, folks, that's Starbase summary. Big thanks to Jack and Mary and the rest of the Starbase live team. Capturing things 24-7 out there at Starbase. Big thanks to the team for putting it together as well. Hey, I, I don't always say thanks to Thomas Hagen, but uh, thank you so much, Thomas, for editing these together. I'm John Galloway. Appreciate y'all watching. See you down in the comments, and we'll see you nerds later.